Developers from several wargaming studios have collaborated to present players with an ambitious new map called Fata Morgana for the Frontline mode. To provide you with an inside look at the creation process of a fresh map for World of Tanks, we reached out to several developers who played a crucial role in this project. Our journey begins in Graz, Austria, where our partners at Bonfish have diligently focused on crafting the level design and level art over the past few months. So, Bonkfish, what is that? Please give us a brief history. So, Bonkfish, Bonkfish is a gaming studio in the center of Graz. Uh, we do games since 15 years. Back then, we started doing our own titles, uh, mostly big open worlds, extreme sports, that kind of stuff. So, how exactly does your collaboration with Wargaming look like? So, they were looking for a partner uh, because they wanted to do a new game mode. Really big open spaces, large battles. And that's where we came to play. That suggests frontline to me. Yes, and that's exactly what happened back then. So we had this team of roughly 30 people and got tasked with uh, exactly doing that. So we sat down with guys from Wargaming, with their designers, with their engineers. They showed us how their engine works and we then delivered. Now we are here talking with Thomas. He's lead level designer. What exactly does that mean? Uh, here in Graz, we are three level designers. So I did, um, basically plan for our team which tasks need to be done. Also, we discuss all of our designs and I basically have the last word. I try to have the, uh, every team member having the same right in, the, in their designs. So with this new map, is it going to differ gameplay-wise from the other two that are already in the game? With the third map, we heard feedback from uh, players that they want to have a little bit more lane interaction. So we tried to integrate positions around the map where they can exchange the lanes easier. So we tried to dissolve the principle of the lanes a little bit and guide players throughout the map to give them possibilities to switch lanes easier. I think it is pretty difficult to achieve, but how do you make sure that every type of class is rewarding to play and uh, like has positions to be useful in? This is actually something that is, I think, a little bit uh, special for our team. All of us prefer different tank types, so as we design a level, uh, of course, uh, design positions for each and every tank class. I, for example, love heavy tanks. I make sure that in each and every zone there is this tight choke point which I can hold or reach through. Paul, for example, is trying to integrate more positions for light tanks, which he enjoys. When designing a map, what things do you consider desirable or undesirable when creating? So basically we aim for um, a good gameplay balance for, for the map. So each of the tanks have good opportunities throughout the different sectors. But also undesirable moments for players create a choice for them. So basically if they know that they can't perform well in a certain situation, they might avoid it next time or use a different tank in that regard. How exactly do you decide on gameplay when placing strategic objectives like, for example, cap zones, repair zones or even the turrets at the end? The cap circles, the repair circles and the turrets at the end are basically the backbone of a map. We place them strategically so that players can reach them within a certain time. We have a basic concept of how we set up a map in terms of an excitement graph, basically. So the first zone with the first three cap circles is kind of easier to reach for the attackers and hard to defend for the defenders. And the second zone basically uh, is in on e more equal distance to each other, so that the um, opportunities for attackers and defenders are more equalized. And towards the end, towards the big turrets, we call them HQ objects, defenders have a way stronger position against the, the moving attacks. The repair circles basically function as a connection point between those to create a gathering point or an, a breathing moment for the attackers before they get towards the next zone. And for defenders, can use the repair circles for defending the cap circles by retreating from their positions and then uh, repair and replenish their, their supplies and then re-engage into battle. And this is also for the HQ zone, only the defenders have a, a repair circle close to the um, HQ objects.
So here we are now with Gerald from the Level Arts team. What exactly is it that you guys do? Uh, we are from the Level Arts team in Wargaming Bo Bo and we practically do the beauty pass on the map. Yeah? So when level design is uh, finishing the, the block out of the whole map, we practically take over and uh, make everything beautiful. Are there any particular challenges that you need to keep in mind when designing a large frontline map, apart from obviously the map being huge? Well, taking over a frontline map production um, has for sure some uh, challenges we, we interfere with. So, of course, as you mentioned, the huge size of the map brings in some challenges like on the one hand, of course, which is obvious, we have to propagate the digitalization pass on the whole map, which is then, of course, more work than on a standard map. But on the other hand, we also need to figure out the optimization since we as level artists, uh, we want to achieve various biomes so that players also uh, have it easier to navigate on. So that means uh, we can have a, a more rocky area, then we're going to have a city or a river area. And in that regard, we need also a high amount of unique assets. Yeah? And there we, of course, have also some, some limitations we're facing. And we need to find a balance between uh, making the map beautiful, but uh, also optimized in terms of the asset usage. Now we are here with Jörg from TechArt. Hello Jörg. So, as far as my understanding goes, you are basically the fun police. Yes. <laughs> I keep, keep artists from having too much fun. That's, that's my job. Um, I guess you monitor whatever the art and also the level design team are, to, are doing. At least that is my understanding. And then you tell them um, how much fun they are allowed to have with <laughs> their actions. How exactly does that work? Well, they... It's in the nature of their work, they add stuff to the map. And adding stuff to the map kills performance, so... At some point I will have to go to them and tell them to stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very... How very exactly simple. do you find that out? Do you have automated test runs? Do you um, actually like try to play on the map yourself? Explain All, that process, please. Yes, uh, basically we do... We have a possibility to have a local test whenever we want and there's automated test runs every night comparing our this frontline map to the older frontline maps pure number wise and of course i make a special a copy of the map where i can manipulate stuff so i take off the all the experimental mo models that are not yet optimized and put them also into the test and i can compare the numbers could you tell us the biggest issues that could cause performance problems or even crashes? Fuel range. Uh, performance problems is always dependent on fuel range. Uh, if you have too much stuff in one uh, few, then you will, you will have performance problems. It's inevitable. Naturally, this would mean that elevated positions are not a good idea performance-wise then? Not without the vision blogger. If you can see from one edge of the map to the other, then you have a, or from one side of the map to the other, then you have a, definitely have a problem, even if it's a desert mm -hmm. with only bushes and then it's, it needs to be prevented. And we are back in our office in Prague. Here, the VFX and also the environmental artists are working on the map. So let's see what they have to say. So please, Valentin, first of all, tell us what exactly does a VFX artist do? Um, VFX art. It's just a part of development correlated to the visual side. We are working in the part of visual effects together with other team on development of this map. What kind of VFX art are there? So probably something like environment or maybe even animals. Can you tell us about something specifically regarding this new frontline map which you created for this? It should be like a sandish, desertish. For that we create many, many environmental effects of uh, dust, which can be filled all the map. As well, we create different fauna effects near to the sea line. It's uh, seagulls, <laughs> they are flying over the ships. So if you create a particular effect, like for example, a seagull or the dust blowing over stones, how many iterations of back and forth would you take from the first draft to mm -hmm. the final product? First of all, we need a concept art. We need to understand how 
stronger effect should be in that place from the player's perspective and the game design perspective as well. If it's something like a, in common, it's like an environmental effect, we try to create it slightly visible, not interact with the gameplay at all, just to see it's like a bit. But of course, we need to meet with the art owner of the map, uh, then to talk with uh, 2D artists to make the sketch of emotional sketch mood for, for the mood and then try to recreate this mood by our particle system. Also a big landmark on the map is the oil refinery, which uh, I believe has a lot of VFX effects as well. Did you create some especially for this building? Most necessary uh, visual effects, the pillar effect in the, the game, in this event, because of we have to see the smoke from any point from the map. It's our direction where the player should go at the end. So we create some sketch of these effects uh, to, to talk with the art director. Our art director look on that effects and give us some feedbacks. He like to have some fire from the pipes. That smoke should be not horizontal and not vertical. It should be some shape and looks perfect from different angles. All right, Valentin, thanks very much for sharing all of your insights. Thanks also for answering our questions and I very much look forward to seeing the VFX out in the game. Now we are here with the guys from Environment Art, particularly Kirill. Uh, what does a normal workday look like for you? What we are doing is actually result of our work can be observed on all the maps of World of Tanks. So each rock is created by Environment Art. Each building is created by Environment Art. So single individual assets that are scattered and the whole map is populated with, that's us. In the creation process for this new frontline map, were there any particular obstacles you had to overcome, particular challenges? So the challenge here was that, that objects are huge. So what was requested was literally up to 300 meters length. So it's a huge cluster that we could not achieve technically because we would not have that much of a video memory to get all of that. We took original photo scans and put them directly in the game. Instantly it clicks, it sends you this rich visual response that is full of details and full of complexity that you don't treat but you perceive. That was a fantastic moment and we understood, okay, only photogrammetry and leaving as less of your human being footprints on that, on your way of converting like high res, super, uh, super detailed, uh, pure photo scan into gameplay asset. The less footprints are there, the better it looks in the end. Now you mentioned level artists. Uh, I would imagine those are the guys in Graz. How exactly does your work together with them look? We have collaboration on, uh, on a daily basis. Of course, there is uh, one of the most important meetings when everybody who involved into, into production are there and Geralt as an art owner, he provides his vision, he provides his feedback. He sees the whole progress of the, of the work on the map done um, during the week and he put comments on that, steering each of us separately plus together. Y you know what's, what's important here to understand, like no matter how beautiful assets environment artists can deliver, without proper skillful level artists, there is no beauty. So they do find fantastic ways of how put them into bigger, massive compositions, which do make sense. Now, obviously, players want to know, did you put any kind of Easter eggs onto the map? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kirill, then thanks for the time you took to answer all our questions. And I'm personally really looking forward to play the map. Well, that was all we have for you today, Commanders. We hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like, by the way. And hopefully you also found it a bit informative. Our devs are gonna keep working on the map, as currently for us it isn't finished yet, but for you it should be out. So hopefully you're grinding those sweet credits. We'll see each other on the battlefield.